Hello, my name is Shelley Sklan and I was Midori's English teacher and homeroom teacher at Professional Children's School. During this intermission, I wouldn't be able to define who Midori is even if I had unlimited time. If we could define what a poem is in a word, we wouldn't have to read it. Or if we could adequately articulate what a piece of music means, we wouldn't have to listen to it. I think human beings are so complicated that sometimes in trying to understand them, we put them into little compartments. But Midori has always resisted such compartmentalization, like an easy word like prodigy. It's impossible to actually see someone grow, but change can become visible in memory as moments isolated in time. Now, I want to share with you a few such moments, some of my memories of Midori in the sixth grade. We have to um, change the number. Uh, <laughs> you're rounding up. Okay. Yes. Yeah. From an early age, Midori had a very complicated and heavily scheduled life, which might appear to leave very little room for play. But she had a way of bringing joy and fun even to math class. For example, she decided one day that I should marry her math teacher. Most kids in sixth grade see their teachers' lives as beginning and ending in school, not Midori. She was always interested and had something to say about every aspect of my life. And since I wasn't married, why not? Once I found Midori making posters and designing invitations. What's the big event? I asked her. It turned out that she felt our class activity of acting out scenes from Anne Frank's diary was missing something, an audience. For Midori, there was no such thing as only an assignment. If she did something, it had to be for real. And acting out a play with no one watching would be like having a conversation with yourself. No surprises. I, I like the picture of flowers. Sometimes I make cards and I put picture of purple flowers. I like the color purple. Midori was born in Osaka, Japan. Her mother, Setsu, began teaching Midori the violin when she was four. They came to New York when she was eight years old. Neither of them spoke any English. One of my first memories of Midori is of her sitting in the school cafeteria. She was a little girl holding an enormous newspaper, searching through the real estate ads for a place to live. Eventually, they found an apartment on New York's Upper West Side. Midori had a busy schedule, five full days at school, homework, and about four hours a day of practicing the violin. She studied music every Saturday at the pre-college division of the Juilliard School. Her musical studies included playing in the orchestra and chamber music class. At Juilliard, she also took lessons with Dorothy DeLay, who for more than 40 years has taught many of the world's top violinists. All right, and the next. By the sixth grade, Midori had already performed with Zubin Mehta and the New York Philharmonic, and in Washington for the President and Mrs. Reagan. Violinist Pincus Zuckerman, who was himself a child prodigy, also heard Midori play at Aspen. She came in front of these people there, and I didn't know what to do with her. I really, she hardly spoke any English at the time. She had just been here for a few months. And she started playing the Bartok Second Violin Concerto. Now, the Bartok Second Violin Concerto is one of the most difficult things to play, period. And it was extraordinary. I was. When I sat down, I was taller than she was. So I immediately took a chair and I sat next to her. And I just started crying, you know, because it is, it, I had never seen anything quite like it. 
this is to me the most extraordinary human endeavor that exists for all of us because she is something very, very special that comes really once in 50 or 75 years. Today, Midori at 19 describes herself as someone who never looks back. I'm always trying out new ideas and I'm always, my ears are always open for new ideas and for new suggestions and I'm, I'm a very adventurous girl. I, I'm trying everything. <laughs> I play one concert, and by the time I finish that concert, I'm already looking forward to the next concert and trying to figure out how I could make it better. Although she loves to read and write, and is trying her hand at a little cooking, the violin remains the center of her life. For me, in a way, music is something that I really need to live just as we need you know, food and water, and we need to eat, and we need to sleep. And for me, I also need my violin. I can't live without it. I won't be me. I continued to teach Midori throughout high school. In her senior year, one of the last compositions she wrote for me took the form of a letter to the composer Brahms. In the letter she wrote, you understand me as well as I do myself. I don't exactly know why this is, but didn't the fox teach the little prince that the beauty of things lies where it cannot be seen? I am so proud that the friendship between your music and me was accomplished without words. After all, words are the source of misunderstanding. Midori always knew that teachers are people too. They grow and learn along with their students. Knowing Midori gave me a glimpse, a hint, of the mysterious and the unnameable. Seeing her change and grow over the years has been like watching a magic show, but one with real magic. No mirrors, no tricks, just Midori.